Hi there, it's Nicole here today for Simon Says Stamp and I'm sharing a masked card design featuring the brand new Simon Says Stamp December Card Kit of the Month, Milk and Cookies. I'm going to start by building my background. I've got some Nina's Smooth White cardstock here that I'm trimming into a strip that's going to fit across the front of a standard A2 size card base. Then I'm going to trim down some of the pattern papers from the kit from the Milk and Cookies pattern papers. The kind of brown tone on tone background and then some of the red and white striped pattern paper. And I want to cut this a little bit wider than what I actually think I need because I want to add a decorative edge to both long sides of this red and white striped paper with the Simon Says Stamp Scallop Stitches dies. So I'm going to start with a five and a half inch long by three inch strip of red and white striped paper and then right along each long side I want to tape that die in place. I am using the largest of the three scalloped borders from this die collection and I'm going to die cut a scalloped edge. Not only does it die cut the scalloped edge, but it adds this awesome stitching detail that gives a lovely finishing look. My plan here is for my masked scene to fit inside both of those stitching lines, leaving this really nice red and white scallop border along those long edges. So I'll go ahead and do the second one. And there is kind of what it's gonna look like. I did end up trimming down my brown background paper to four inches by five and a quarter in the finished card. So it's gonna be slightly smaller than the border that I'm creating. On my border, what I like to do when I'm working on a mask is I generally, or a masked design or scene, I like to lay all my stamps out and gauge where I think they're all gonna go. This also is a great way to show you which images need to be in the background and which images are gonna be in the foreground. Santa and Mrs. Claus are going to be in front of the animals if there is any overlap at all. I think the cat actually ended up not overlapping in the finished design. Santa's hand is slightly back behind the tail of the dog. So I'm gonna start here. I wanted, I guess I wanted parts of each of them, some to be behind, some to be in front. I hope that makes sense. Maybe as I stamp them out, it'll show a little bit better. So I've got my cat and my dog on either side and that's going to be kind of the outer moist, outermost points of my scene. I'm going to stamp those first with a Copic friendly ink and I'm going to stamp them a couple times using the Misty really helps with this kind of a style and then I'm going to take some masking paper and this is the Simon Says Stamp masking paper. I highly recommend it. I really love it because it's nice and strong but it doesn't tear your paper. It's really great. Then I'm simply going to create masks for these two images. Now, if there's not gonna be overlapping, you wouldn't necessarily have to create a mask for all of the images. I did create full masks for all four images because I want to add not only some inking to the background to show you how great it is to be able to add some texture or color to the background with these masks, but I'm also going to be adding falling snow with the falling snow stencil and white embossing paste. S masks are so handy and work fantastic for these kinds of techniques. Now, once I have the dog all fussy cut, when you're creating a mask, try to cut right on the black line. That's going to ensure that your mask will fit within the black line of the stamped image on your project. You don't want to have a little white shadow all the way around. So try to cut on that black line or just kind of just inside. That is going to really give you a nice mask. Next, I want to stamp Santa 
And then Mrs. Claus is going to just be slightly behind him or her head is. That's really going to be about the only point where those two will touch. So Santa is next. I've got my masks for the other two images. Give him a couple of good presses here. And then I'm going to use some of those little scraps of masking paper and create masks. A lot of times I will not even ink up the ma um, image again to stamp the mask. The light outline is generally enough to be able to cut out that outline. Finally, we have Mrs. Claus. We'll stamp her a couple times, stamp a mask for her, trim that out, and place that right over the top of her as well. So out of one little strip of masking paper, I still have a little bit left even. So I got four masks out of that whole thing. On a scrap of black cardstock now, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my sentiment for my card. I absolutely adore this stamp set included in the December card kit. This is called Christmas Squad, and I had to use the sentiment from our squad to yours, Merry Christmas. I just thought that was so cute and clever. Um, plus, I really love the font and the size of the font just a super, super greeting. In fact, all the greetings in the stamp set are just phenomenal, as well as the images. An absolutely adorable stamp set. I think you guys are just going to love this. I'm gonna heat set my greeting now with white embossing powder. I'm always a huge fan of white embossing powder on black cardstock. And this is gonna be trimmed into a thin strip I'm using a Swiffer dust cloth to get rid of some of that powder and any little stray embossing powder flex that it, Swiffer dry cloth works great. I'm going to trim this into a nice th thin, maybe about a quarter inch, maybe not quite even, uh, yeah, probably about a quarter inch wide strip. And this is going to go along the bottom edge. In fact, I'm gonna trim down my white panel. I've left quite a bit of room up at the top and I want both the white strip and the black greeting strip to fit within the stitching lines that I have um, on that red and white striped paper. So I'm just gonna snip that down just a little bit, about uh, probably about a fourth of an inch and that's gonna work great. Now I like to do my masking first, inking, stenciling, whatever it might be before I color my images. And that's because in case there would be some sort of an accident when masking and inking and stenciling or whatever it might be, um, I don't want to have already put in all the work of coloring my images. So this is, where I'm gonna add my color to the background. I'm just adding a little blue ink here with a really light hand, just mostly to the top edge of this design to serve as the sky. And then the Falling Snow stencil from Simon Says Stamp has been one of my favorites forever. I absolutely love it. I use it all the time. We're gonna do a nice thin coat of white embossing paste all over this strip um, I'm not gonna go all the way down to the bottom. I'm gonna concentrate that up near the top. This is where I want the snow to appear and then I'm gonna leave it white along the bottom edge almost like that is the snow. Then I'm gonna remove my stencil. I will do all the cleaning and everything like that of my stencil and palette knife while the embossing paste dries. And it does dry very, very quickly. Once it was completely dry, I'm gonna say I probably let it sit for 20 or 30 minutes. I'm gonna peel off my masks to reveal my stamped outline below. At this point, it is time to start coloring. I am gonna speed this up just a little bit because it is quite a bit of coloring for, fall, for four full images. However, it did go together pretty quick. There are not that many Copic colors used. For each section that I'm coloring, I've listed the numbers of Copic markers across the top of the screen for easy reference. The skin tones I'm using are E00, 11, and 13. And then I'll do a little R20 for the cheeks on Santa and Mrs. Claus. That's just going to pink them up a little bit. These images are absolutely darling. So super cute. 
I can't wait to maybe make some tags with these, I think would be really fun. Um, with some of the other greetings in the stamp set, I really love the Christmas is claws for celebration instead of cause. So um, I think that's really cute and clever. The animals, of course, are just really, really fun. And they pair so fantastically with the Doodlebug stickers in the kit. These are the milk and cookie stickers, and we're gonna be using some of those to kind of finish out and round out the scene. They're sized perfectly for some little oversized gumdrops and candy canes. I tried to color everything that was red all at once. So we started with the skin going on to the Santa hats or stocking caps, scarves, Santa and Mrs. Claus's outfits, kind of keeping all of that colored together. The colors I'm using for reds are our 24, 46, and 39. Get a nice blend here. You can really see the images in the scene starting to take shape the more color that's added. Once all of the red is down, we're going to color in a little bit of hair. I started with the hair and then I kind of moved off of that. So I did try to stick to all of one color at one time, but then I started moving around kind of as the mood uh, struck me and I noticed I forgot Santa's nose. So I snuck in there and did his nose real quick. I will go ahead and do the cat and then we'll move on to the hair. The cat is E33, 35 and 39. This is kind of a, I haven't used this color combination previously a lot, but lately it's one of my go-to color combinations for cats. Um, also, it's great for hair, for people, for people images. I really, really like this color combination. Some nice quick coloring, a little R20 for the cheeks and the nose on the cat. I love how the cat's sitting. I think this would make darling gift tags as well. Add in just a little bit more shadowing and shading here and there. Here are the little pink cheeks. Some warm grays are going to be perfect for adding shading to the white areas on the stocking caps and Santa's costume and also coloring in the hair. I want the hair to appear to still be white, both for Mrs. Claus and Santa, but I still want it to have that great depth and dimension. So I'm doing this with warm gray zero, zero, one, and three. For the shoes and the belt, those are gonna be cool grays instead of warm grays with C6 and C9. I'll add some highlights later to the shoes with a white gel pen to give them a little bit more definition. So now I'm going to go back and do Santa's beard, his mustache, the trim on his hat and his pom-pom, the trim on his costume, kind of do all of that with these same colors. Just doing a little flicking feathering motion for to get that texture for his beard, for Mrs. Claus's hair. Blend a little bit better for the trim on the clothes and the hat since I don't need the texture that the hair does. I forgot her legs, so I'm going to go back and color those in. You could also make them tights if you wanted to and color those in a different color. For the dog, I'm using one of my go-to favorite color combinations, E40, 43, 44, and 47. The majority of the card is 43, 44, and 47. E40 is really only gonna be used for the belly of the dog and the spots. And my mask did roll up on his ear just a tiny bit, so I made sure and colored that nice and dark with my E47, and that's really gonna cover up any of that blue ink. I think I rubbed just a little bit too hard right there when I, the mask was on and I it rolled up a little bit. If that happens, generally you can fix it just by coloring over it a little bit. So 
So we only have a little bit left. Um, the trim on the hat, the belt buckle is gonna be a little YR31. The collar, the little tag on the collar, also YR31. And then color in her apron. I decided to go with some greens. I really felt like I needed to pull in another color. And went pretty traditional with my greens with YG01, 23, and 17. Blend all of that out real good. Using a black pen to add detail to the eyes on all of the images. Go ahead and attach my border and the greeting strip right to my red and white scalloped strip. A little 1 8 inch score tape works great for these thin strips like this. It's nice and strong as well. At this point, I decided I'd go ahead and add some additional little images. In this instance, they're going to be made out of stickers instead of stamps. The candy cane and gumdrop stickers just really finish off this border so nicely. They're so super cute. I've got a white side fold card base here. I did trim down that background panel to four by five and a quarter inches and I'm gonna center it on the background, which will leave a nice white border all the way around the edges. And then I will go ahead and adhere my strip, kind of scoot it down a little bit lower so it's not exactly in the center of my background. Anything that overhangs just a little bit, I wanna trim off at this point. Before I finish my card with a few additional stickers and then we'll add some detail, highlights, and things like that to the images with a white pen. There are these awesome little hearts in the sticker sheet. So one is gonna go at the end of the greeting strip and that really finishes off the greeting strip nicely with that little teeny tiny heart. The other three hearts are gonna be scattered, kind of coming up from between the dog and Santa. There'll be one on the border itself and then two up high. A little glossy accents on the nose of the dog on Santa's belt buckle and the nose of the cat, plus the little tag hanging there from the dog's collar. And then a white pin is gonna be used to add highlights. Also some little dots to the cheeks on the dog and the cat. Highlights to the hats, to the outfits, collars, shoes, all little things like that add a fantastic finishing touch and really finish off this sweet masked Christmas Squad scene card featuring the December 2017 Simon Says Stamp Card Kit Milk and Cookies. For more information on this project, please be sure to visit the Simon Says Stamp blog. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.